Hi, Brian. You've been in the road now several months talking about SDN and NFV with our customers. Yes. It seems that it's a very hot topic. Yes, everybody's talking about it. Really, they want us to explain what it really is and then what, what does it mean to them. And they want real use cases. They, they see a lot of hype at the moment. They say, well, everybody's talking about SDN, yeah, but yeah. what value does it really bring? And when you can answer that question, then it can be really meaningful to them. And you can talk about use cases. Absolutely. And what, what would be maybe the, the use cases you present to them? What are the, the ones that get more traction to our service provider customers? There, there are two, actually, very interesting ones that they always seem to be in, enthralled by. Uh, first one is really virtual CPE. It's a tremendous opportunity to really simplify the equipment that they're putting customer sites over the years mm -hmm. and, and just have a piece of equipment that can be self-installed and bring all of the intelligence to the network. And this allows them to deliver services in a whole new way, to upsell new services and to deliver services much more efficiently for the Absolutely. customer. Um, the second one is what we call the, the, the cloud broker. And this is the ability for the telco to really play into the value chain of the cloud services and add real value. And there are three areas that they really talk about when they talk about what value can they provide over and above any other cloud service mm -hmm. provider. And the first one is the network. We talk about the value of the network to them. Absolutely. You know, Other people don't have a network. So with the network, what we can do is deliver an end-to-end -end SLA, an end-to-end -end performance, an end-to-end -end experience for a particular application application. So that's the first thing they talk about. The second thing they talk about is something we call the service wrap. They can provide a single point to call when something goes wrong. So normally, you know, if the service isn't working, it could be the network provider that's not working so well that's causing that to happen, or it could be the data center that's not causing that to happen. And if you ring one, it says, well, it's perfectly okay here, and the other guy says, well, it's not my network, and you're in the middle. You know, how do you get the thing fixed? There's one place to go, you know? And that's extended beyond that to things like a single bill, having a single bill for the service. Now, in, in cloud services, there could be thousands of services in the future you might want to subscribe to. You've got to have separate bills and separate relationships for all those things, different places to call when things go wrong. Now you've got this whole environment, and within that, they can provide guarantees for those services and security for those services. And another thing that's going to be very important is compliance. Because when you actually move services out into the cloud, you don't just move the application, you move the data as well. Okay. The data is, is your crown jewels. It's the details of your customers, you know, it's the details of you know, the things that you're planning, the new services all sorts of things that you actually want to put out in the cloud. And when you do that, you want to ensure that that data is protected and that data is protected in a compliant way. If you're the CIO of a company, the fact that you've moved the data off your site and into the cloud doesn't negate your fiduciary responsibilities <laughs> to ensure that that important data and your customer's data is properly protected. Wow, so it seems that SDN and NFV will play a key role in, uh, in very important and strategic parts like cloud, you mentioned virtual CPE, but tell me, Brian, what would be the main obstacles that you see for service providers adopting NFV and, and SDN if it's going to solve so many problems? One of the obstacles that you don't immediately think about is not technical. It's really organizational. What you actually find is that, it, uh, that who do you actually go to? It's software-defined networks. Is that the CIO mm -hmm. or is it the CTO? And when you talk about providing servers in the network and servers in the data center and having intelligence and linking it all up, well, you, you get across organizational boundaries. And really, there's an evolution that has to happen in companies organizationally to really enable this to really move forward in many cases. Yeah, absolutely. So I find the same problem normally you, when we talk about SDN, many different departments are interested. So you see people from the OSS or network or IT, but it's difficult to know where do we start. But what would be your suggestion? How those service providers need to organize themselves in order to be able to adopt SDN and NFV? I'm already seeing some of that change. I'm seeing some organizations okay. where they've merged the CIO and the CTO organizations mm -hmm. together. Actually, generally, it's the CIO that's become the leader of all of this. The software has become the, the leader, the, the, the glue uh, that's really enabled all of this. So I actually see organizations creating things like CTIOs or CITOs and, and bringing the two organizations together. It makes, it makes sense. Um, what, w what do you predict will happen to those service providers not doing any changes in their organizations or not preparing the organization for, for SDN or NFV or what happened to them? I think SDN and NFV is a tremendous disruptor. 
I'll mm -hmm. come to what I mean by that in a second. I think it's going to cause a real change to the network architecture, and that's what I mean by disruption. I think we've seen it several times. Um, I mean, the horizon that I really remember is really the horizon of IP. We saw IP networking become prevalent, become ubiquitous. It's really changed everything. The internet runs on it. Everything runs on it now, right? And I think NFV actually is going to be the bigger disruptor. I think NFV is bigger than SDN, than this idea mm -hmm. of network function virtualization. It's the ability to actualize a network component instantly in the network, to create it instantly. You know, you don't have to bring a box Check in anyway, just, just turn it up right away. And, and to create new services on the fly. Mm -hmm. And that ability to create those new services with a brain on the top, which is SDN, controlling it, is really a tremendous enabler for the future for network service providers to create a transformational architecture. So then we can say probably service providers not changing their organization, they will be I, losing it. I think service providers that don't react to this technology, that stand, that, that don't create the organization and, and embrace this technology, are really going to lose out. I think they're really going to lose out in the next few years because I think this will be the platform that both enables much greater network efficiency and much greater service capabilities, and companies really need that. Yeah, sounds like a very interesting, and I think a lot of stuff being will happen in both sides, in the vendor side, but we see that it's also a lot needs to happen at the service provider organization. So th thank you, Brian, and see you next time. Thank you.